like to bring up Dr. Carol Wallman. I've known Carol for years. We were both active in the impeachment of uh, Cheney first, then Bush movement. And uh, Carol's been such an inspiration to me, so committed and so uh, just consistent with her efforts to try to bring justice and peace to the world. So here I give you Dr. Carol Woolman. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi. Who would like to stand up? This is your turn. Take some breaths. You've heard a lot of bad stuff. Swing your arms. Get in touch with your body. Jump up and down. Okay, sit down. Keep breathing, keep breathing. Now, ask yourself, how do you feel about what you've been hearing? How do you feel? Don't say anything yet. I want you to just take a minute. Somebody timing this? Take a minute, go deep inside yourself, and ask what your feelings are. Then, when I say, now, yell out how you feel. Stark raving outrage. Yeah. Angry. Hello, VD. Worried. How do I tell my kids and their grandchildren? How do we get them to listen to what we're telling them? Concerned. Frustrated. Tired. As someone that went to graduate school at UC Berkeley in the 50s, and I went around with my friends from the physics department and measured the radiation in the rainwater on the cars. I've been working on this for how many years is that now? 70 years? I'm tired! All right, now I want you to consider this. Our DNA makes us who we are as unique individuals. DNA also impels us to reproduce and create the next generation. In a way, we're just vehicles for the DNA to reproduce itself. DNA is sacred. DNA is what we have in common with all the other life forms. As a dominant life form, we're responsible for all the DNA on the planet, on planet Earth. We're the guardians. Radiation impacts DNA, the very stuff of life. It disrupts the DNA chains and it causes mutations that lead to spontaneous abortions, birth defects, cancer. Other organisms are showing this, the signs, the effects already. Our activities are hurting all the DNA on the planet. As Fukushima spews radiation into the air, the groundwater, the Pacific Ocean, we find radioactive tuna, mutant butterflies, starfish are dying off, Sardines are plummeting. There's high rates of thyroid nodules in Japanese children. Over 40 kids in Japan already have thyroid cancer. There's just lots and lots of health and death effects from radiation's impact on DNA. So I want you to ask your DNA what you, as a unique individual with your unique talents, should be doing about Fukushima Daiichi. Your DNA is what's affected by radiation. So I want you to ask your DNA what you should be doing. I want you to breathe deeply into every cell and ask your DNA what to do. We're gonna take two minutes on this one, just of silence, go inside, ask your DNA what you as your unique person with your talents should be doing about all this. Obviously, as people have said, we have to communicate and work together if we're gonna make a difference. There's a social taboo uh, against discussing the nuclear threat in all forms. And the culture of the nuclear village is designed to protect the future of nuclear energy and portray it as safe. And we've just been hearing about what's going on in Japan in the way of suppressing information. They're, su they're not allowing doctors to report that uh, illnesses are the effect of radiation over there. And we're getting silenced over here as well. We have to break the social and the media taboo. So we're gonna start right here and now doing that. I want you to turn to your neighbor or neighbors and talk
talk about what your DNA told you to do. Does anybody know that we get past the point of no return? Yes. I'm a psychiatrist, by the way. This is a consciousness-raising exercise, in case you hadn't guessed. And I've been doing this since the 70s, I think. Um, so I hope that, you know, you've been given some suggestions about writing letters, calling people, et cetera, et cetera. And I hope you can find your own unique talent and what to do, write a song, whatever. One thing that everybody can do is to warn your friends, your family, your neighbors about this problem. Talk about it to everybody you know. Think about, if there was a fire right down the block from you, wouldn't you go running around and telling everybody, hey, there's a fire, you've got to do something about it, let's get together, get a bucket brigade, whatever. This is similar. It's just, it's just as urgent. So, don't keep what you're hearing inside of yourself. Go around, talk to people, tell everybody, tell the people. People aren't going to want to hear it. They're not going to want to hear it. They got to hear it. That's the only way that we're going to wake everybody up. Also, think about the timeline. They're going to start removing these fuel rods next month. At least that's the plan, unless somebody tells them, hey, hold off, let's... let's Let's think about it. You guys don't know what you're doing. You've just made one mistake after another. The workers there are exhausted. They're drinking. They're getting sick. They're getting cancer. They're demoralized. There are fewer and fewer of them. These are the people that are going to operate the cranes to pull those things out of the spent fuel pool. Pretty scary. Pretty scary. Do you know that already several crane arms have fallen into fuel pools? Things break. There's a tower that's 400 foot high that has trusses that are broken. I don't know what's keeping it up there. It could fall any minute. It's not safe for TEPCO or the Japanese government supposedly working with TEPCO to do this. It just isn't. And by the way, there's a group of us that have been working on getting a UN resolution to get an international group together, what Harvey was talking about. Some of the people in this room have been working with some of the delega delegations to the United Nations on this. Anyway, think about your priorities. Think about what's the most important thing. Is it going to the ball game? Is it planning a dinner? Is it going to work? Or is it this? Think about your priorities and try to reorder them according to what's the most urgent thing on the menu. Okay, finally, this is a very dark subject, very hard to focus on it. So I want to read a Hopi prophecy about the times that we live in that maybe will be encouraging. And there are copies of it over there on the table if you want to take it home. It goes, to my fellow swimmers, here is a river flowing now very fast. It is so great and swift that there are those who will be afraid, who will try to hold on to the shore they are being torn apart, and they will suffer greatly. Know that the river has its destination. The elders say, we must let go of the shore and push off into the middle of the river and keep our heads above water. And I say, see who is there with you and celebrate. At this time in history, we are to take nothing personally, least of all ourselves. For the moment we do, our spiritual growth and journey come to a halt. The time of the lone wolf is over. Gather yourselves. Banish the word struggle from your attitude and vocabulary. All that we do now must be done in a sacred manner and in celebration, for we are the ones we have been waiting for. How can we work on Fukushima Daiichi and stay positive? Here's how I do it. I think of the radiation as pure energy. 
I try to convert the negative to positive by cherishing the truth, opening my heart, loving myself, my neighbor, the whales, the polar bears, and my grandchildren. And there are over there also a bunch of love your neighbor buttons, and I urge everybody to pick one up and wear it like that. Uh, use your breath to purify the dark energy and turn it to light. And know that there are many prophecies in many cultures about these dark times, and they predict a good outcome. Here's one from the Cree tribe, and there's a copy of it over here. And I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's kind of long, but I'll just read part of it. I can find it. There was an old lady from the Cree tribe named Eyes of Fire who prophesied that one day, because of the white man's or Yonegi's greed, there would come a time when the fish would die in the streams, the birds would fall from the air, the waters would be blackened, and the trees would no longer be. Mankind, as we would know it, would all but cease to exist. There would come a time when the keepers of the legends, stories, culture, rituals, and myths, and all the ancient tribal customs would be needed to restore us to health. They would be mankind's to survival. They, we, are warriors of the rainbow. There would come a time of awakening when all the peoples of all the tribes would form a new world of justice, peace, freedom, and recognition of the great spirit. The warriors of the rainbow, that's us, would spread these messages and teach all the people of the earth. They would teach them how to live the way of the great spirit. Tell how the world today has turned away from the great spirit and that's why our earth is sick. They would teach harmony among all people in all four corners of the earth. So I share Nick's vision about the spiritual awakening of this time. <clears throat> Finally, many people question these days of whether there is a God, and if so, whether this creator intends to destroy life on this earth. Probably many people here don't even believe in such a thing or the Bible, but we're in a church, so I'm going to read a passage from the Bible that answers that question. It's from Deuteronomy 30, chapter 30, verse 19. It goes like this. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you. I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now, choose life so that you and your children may live. So I'll end by saying let's work together and choose life. Thank you.